Hey friends, Ash here. Welcome back to GenSense. Hope that you're well. You know what's high right now? Nah, not Snoop Dogg. Fragrance prices. Pretty much across the board, whether we're talking niche, indie, or even designer, fragrance prices seem to be on the rise, especially if we're just talking about at full retail. But even at discounters as well, some of them are pretty penny. And with that in mind, I wanted to go over with you guys today 10 fragrances that are perfect for spring and also summer that are not gonna break the bank. Fragrances where you don't have to spend a mortgage payment to pick up a bottle. Because I know for a lot of you out there, when you see a new fragrance come out, you're like, wow, I'd be really interested in that. And then you see the price point at retail and it's $180 or 200 plus dollars. You just go, oh, 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 I feel you. I feel you. So I wanted to go over some stuff today that is not going to make you feel that way. Stuff that if you buy this, you're not going to pony up that much cash. And uh, it also kind of lowers that bar of stress for you. Even if you dislike the fragrance, right? And I'm not talking about just these, but cheaper fragrances in general. It's not as bad. You don't have as much of a visceral reaction. You know, if you spend $25 on something and you don't really like it, nah, it's 25 bucks, right? If you spend 250 bucks on something and you don't like it, mm. Mm. that's a different story. So all these fragrances I'm gonna to talk to you guys about here today are linked in the description below. Feel free to check them out down there. And going along with the topic of today's video, saving money, here are a lot of codes you can use to save money across a multitude of different fragrance websites. So there's a new code, GENTS, which will get you 10% off at bestbrandsperfume.com. There's GS11 for 11% off at fragflex.com. Triple Traders, still gent cents for 10% off, and then all the other websites you see right here as well. So use those codes to save yourself some money. All right, let's jump into these fragrances. No particular order. We're gonna start off with Perry Ellis America. <gasps> Okay. Now there are two different versions of Perry Ellis America, two different fragrances with the name Perry Ellis America. Don't get them confused. The one I'm talking about is this one in the big old blue bottle. Now this has a similarity to a very popular fragrance out there that you may have heard of before called Creed Aventus. And I would say that yes, also Mont Blanc Explorer would be a good, somewhat inexpensive fragrance. It's a little more expensive now from discounters than it used to be, but still a solid pickup for a not too hefty price point. That said, this one is gonna be cheaper. So this one has a lot of pineapple off the top, smells really nice, a lot of fruit in there, uh, bergamot as well as the pineapple. Uh, some people have found it similar to Cedrap Watsé, other people do Nishani Hasavat, but again, this is gonna be right in that uh, Creed Aventus style of fragrance, which means it has a lot of versatility, usability. You also have a little lavender in here, some myrrh, you have uh, amber as it dries down as well, some birch also. Performance here is okay for me, it's not anything mind blowing, but it gets the job done, doesn't cost all that much. Actually, smells much higher quality than you would expect for the price point. Now with this one, it has traditionally been easy to find at discounters and really, really cheap. That being said, uh, when I looked it up, it was, at least as of this video, not available at the usual discounters that I shop at. So it was showing sold out pretty much across the board, which is not always great, but you can still find this one at Perry Ellis's website as part of a gift set. So the fragrance and then like shower gel and other stuff also for 45. And you can find it on Amazon for less than that. Uh, that being said, I would want to pick this one up for less than that if possible. I mean, 45 is not super expensive, right? But uh, this is one that I would personally want to pick up in that like 30 to 35 range, anything less than that is good, is nice, is good. So I would keep my eyes open for this one if it sounds interesting to you uh, at the discounters, you know, that you typically shop at and try to find it there. Uh, but when it is in stock, a great alternative to those three fragrances that I mentioned before, good quality, good price, good wearability, nice compliment factor. It's a great scent, again, as long as you pick it up for cheap. Now let's talk about this one, Icon Racing from Dunhill. Uh, now, when this came out, when this was brand new, if you were around back then, this was like a monster hype beast for about two days. For, <laughs> for about two days there, Icon Racing was like all anybody wanted, all anybody was talking about. It's a snapshot in time, how everyone was just like, oh my God, have you smelled the new Icon? And then after two days, it was like, 
Uh, what's next? Next hype beast. Can we bring that in? <laughs> this, I, we, we need a new one, okay? Okay, uh, Icon Racing, I never heard of that stuff. What is that? Now, the reason behind it was, uh, at the time, there was a video that uh, Jeremy Fragrance did, and he had a lady smell this, and she gave it a 10 out of 10. That's when this was a new release. And everybody was like, oh, did you see? 10 out of 10, dog, I gotta get it. And then like two days later, I think he did another video, uh, same girl, and she smelled this again and rated it something lower. Like, I don't remember, it was like a seven or something like that. Maybe somebody else out there who's, you know, more into that will know. And it was so funny at the time, because Jeremy was even like, you gave this a 10 like two days ago. And she was like, nah, it's like a seven now. <laughs> I'm dead. This one you can find right now for about 35 to 40. Uh, most of the Icon fragrances are pretty cheap from discounters. And uh, also the original Icon that would work really well as a spring fragrance also. So this one, you're gonna get grapefruit. You're gonna get a little cardamom, some orange blossom in the mid here as well. You also have lavender, black pepper, and musk. Uh, it initially got comparisons to Invictus Aqua, Legend Spirit, kind of in that style a little bit. And it certainly has a touch of that kind of freshness and sweetness off the top. But I will say that Icon Racing is not quite as like bubblegum sweet, not as saccharine sweet as those ones can come across. This one is a little bit more grown up, slightly more elegant, but still in that overall style. Another one that's extremely wearable, very versatile, easy to pull off that people do like a lot. And I'm talking about just your, your average person. This is a really appealing scent profile. Doesn't cost very much at all. The bottle, the presentation looks solid, looks nice. And the performance on this one is pretty good as well. So Icon Racing, that one worth a pick up if you're looking for a cheap everyday wear kind of fragrance that has a little sweetness to it, but not overdone. Let's go fresh with low DC shades of Kolam next. I'm probably butchering that pronunciation, I apologize. This is from Isi Miyake. This one you can find as of this video for about $25, and that's at Joma Shop. It is really, really, really inexpensive. Now, I've said this before, I'll say it again. With Isi Miyake, a lot of times they're cool weather fragrances are a little bit more attention grabbing to me personally than their warm weather fragrances. But this still at that price point, $25 is a great pickup. So you have bergamot and grapefruit in here and uh, green tea as well. And that tea is gonna be one of the more prominent notes that you pick up in the scent. You have cashmere in the base of the fragrance. It's gonna give it a fuzziness, almost like a fuzzy woodiness, still very fresh as the fragrance dries down. And it's drawn comparisons to a few niche fragrances, actually having some similarities to some other scents out there uh, by Le Lampeau and Diptyque as well. So it's another one that has good freshness to it, good versatility, and has a, enough classiness to it that you could easily wear this to work, to the office, or casually as well. And I actually really like the presentation. I think it looks really slick. 25 bucks, that's next to nothing when you're talking about name brand fragrances. After that one, Dolce & Gabbana, light blue, love is love. Now this is discontinued. And uh, for a while, it was pretty much out of stock most places, uh, couldn't find it very easily. But as of this video, it is in stock, so you can purchase it once again. If you're watching this in the future, maybe not even that far into the future, it's possible that this is gone once again and not quite as easy to find, so keep that in mind. So you can find it for about 35 bucks as of when I'm shooting this video. And um, I would say that also light blue O Intense or the original light blue, that those would work really well also and don't cost a whole heck of a lot of money. And to my own personal taste, O Intense would probably be the one uh, that I would go for personally. Uh, but this one is, I'd say maybe a little more unique than O Intense as a uh, vanilla ice cream scent. <laughs> so that's one of the notes in the fragrance. There's also apple, good amount of apple. You have a grapefruit in here. So you have a nice citrus touch off the top. Actually a decent amount of citrus. There's also bergamot and mandarin orange. Then you get amber wood in the base as it dries. So like I said, you get kind of a citrus mixed with uh, apple and then a soft vanilla ice cream in there, giving it the sweetness in the mid and into the dry down. So really unique, very appealing, easy to wear. Not my personal favorite in the light blue line. That would be more uh, forever, Italian love, and um, oh, intense. 
but still a nice unique addition. One that since it is discontinued, is getting harder to find that less and less and less, fewer, fewer, fewer people are gonna be wearing. And I think for the price point with it being discontinued, it's an interesting pickup and one you can easily wear all spring and summer. All right, now just super versatile Versace Pour Homme. This is one of my go-tos, has been for a long, 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 long time. Uh, I don't think this is, you know, spring specific fragrance or summer specific fragrance. For me, this is kind of just a jack of all trades scent, really. Just really clean, fresh, easy wearing. Similarities to Laurel Sport and Masoni Wave. So those three, uh, they get lumped in together quite often. So you have in here lemon and bergamot off the top. That's the citrus combo that you're gonna get. Actually a decent amount of lemon, not really sharp, but it does have a little more bite than uh, a lot of other citrus combos because lemon is not quite as often used, you know, compared to bergamot or grapefruit. Then you also have neroli in there. It gives it a nice softness along the edges and an additional citrus pop, like an additional nuance to the citrus. You have some other florals in here as it dries down. You have cedar, you have tonka, you've got musk. Again, a really easy wearing kind of out of the shower, fresh fragrance that still has a bit of classiness, just like some of the other ones that we've talked about here. This is, I think, one of the easiest wearing office fragrances ever made. You can really go heavy with this stuff if you want to. Nobody's gonna dislike it. Versace Pour Homme just, Great all around choice, I think. All right, Star Walker up next from Mont Blanc. It's one of my favorites from the house. Uh, it really gets overlooked by your average person because they're gonna be going for one of the legend fragrances or explore. Doesn't cost much at all. And I think it's uh, better suited to spring probably than any other season. If you were gonna try to like pigeonhole this into a specific season, not that you have to do that, but if you did, you can get this one a lot of times in the mid twenties, uh, pretty cheap. It, it stays cheap basically. It's been cheap for the past, I don't know, ever since it came out, it feels like. So essentially for the past almost two decades, this thing has been affordable and pretty easy to find, but I'm okay with that. Again, citrus off the top of bamboo in there. The bamboo is really nice in this one. A little bit watery, clean, green, relaxing, calming. Again, a bit of classiness to it. Sandalwood in there, musk as it dries down as well. This and Gucci Pour Homme 2, which is discontinued, were my go-to like evening, relaxing, calming fragrances for the longest time. Uh, unfortunately, the Gucci you can no longer find easily, but this one you still can. And uh, I think it's also a great daily scent. And the bottles match up really well here. Okay, this next one is gonna get hated on, all right? It has been hated on. It's going to continue to be hated on. But for a lot of people out there looking for an inexpensive fragrance from a house, a brand that people know, it would be a really good daily fragrance, or at least a good fragrance to have in their rotation potentially. Now, do I love the fragrance? I can't sit here and tell you I do, but at the same time, I think that it has a lot of usability for people out there, and so they should be made aware of it. And it's this one, Jimmy Choo Urban Hero. Now, I'm not gonna just flame the fragrance, okay? I'm gonna tell you about the fragrance and things that you could really like. Now, one thing I will say, the cap comes off way too easily. Don't pick this thing up by the cap because it will go flying. I know from experience. Sounds like it clicks in there and then you pick it up. Oh no. So you would look at this, probably think it's a super overly sugary, sweet, uh, youthful scent, but it's actually not. It's got leather in here as one of the more prominent notes that you pick up. There's also finger lime off the top. So a little different citrus in there. You have pepper, rosewood, and vetiver as some of the other notes, some ambroxan as well. So it does have a bit of sweetness and freshness, just not as overloaded, again, as you may think looking at this one, just, you know, without ever smelling it. It has a, an opening that's it's really easy going. Uh, the citrus in there, again, you know, gets your attention. And as it dries down, that leather comes out more and more. It's a very wearable leather scent. It's not one that's overly funky or anything like that. And because of that, that kind of mix, you know, where it's fresher up top and then gets heavier and a little bit darker as it dries down, it has good usability between day or night. Performance could maybe be a little bit better, but again, it is really cheap. So this is one that you could buy, spray on pretty heavy if you wanted to, or spray it onto your clothes and not have to worry if you need to reapply or something. From there, we're gonna go 
with Barbados, who have some of just the uh, best looking bottles, really, especially when you're considering the price point you can get these for. Um, just about all the Barbados fragrances nowadays, you can find for about $35 or less. And this one is Artisan Blue. Now this has a surprisingly good amount of green aspects to the fragrance. Well, surprising if you only see it by the name and color here, if you've never smelled it. But yeah, good amount of green aspects to it. It has basil in here as one of the more prominent notes, gives it an herbaceousness right off the top. You have pine that permeates the fragrance, giving it a woodiness that you can pick up pretty much right away. You have bitter orange, giving you a different take on citrus in the opening, a little more bracing than you may expect, though it's also counterbalanced with more citrus, specifically bergamot. So the bergamot's gonna give you a little, little sweetness, a little bit to try to rein in that bitter orange, but it definitely does not lean over into the super sweet side of things at all. Uh, compared to mandarin no Diamalfi from Tom Ford, which is obviously much more expensive than this one. This is a great change of pace scent for spring and summer or from spring leading into summer. And across the board, again, I feel, and I've said this before, Barbados has some great steals for the price point that you can find them at nowadays. Then we got Coach, Coach for men. I mean, it's just easy, it works. You know, maybe not like the sexiest choice as far as something uh, very different, something out of the norm, but for an inexpensive fragrance that gets the job done in spring and summer, Coach. It's a name everyone knows, presentation looks good, fragrance smells good, super versatile, big compliment puller, doesn't cost you much. I mean, there's a lot to love. It's got pear as kumquat as one of the notes, which uh, you don't hear that too often. That's got a fine note of kumquat. Also has bergamot, lavender, suede, very easygoing leather note in there, ambergris, which is, you know, ambroxan. It has drawn comparisons to Jimmy Choo Man, which is also very affordable. Uh, between the two, I would personally go with Coach for Men if I was gonna keep just one, but Jimmy Choo is also an acceptable fragrance for the price point, and it's also, uh, like this one, really easy to wear, basically an everyday type of scent. You know, one of those ones you can just grab, spray, and go, don't have to think about it. But Coach for Men, gotta put that one in there, just, to, just an easy choice. All right, last up, we got this one, Hugo now so this one is obviously going to be more of a warm weather scent you can tell just by looking at it so if you're using this during the spring be more during those really hot spring days because this is very refreshing extremely brisk it has ice as one of the notes in it along with lemon zest and mint uh, some aquatic notes in there and then vetiver as the base note, so a little woodiness in there as well as it dries down. Now, a couple things to know about this. It comes in the canteen style bottle. So if you're familiar with the Hugo Boss canteen style fragrances, you know what I'm talking about. They typically come across a um, little simplistic. They have a certain feel to them when you spray them on. So uh, they don't come across like something that's trying to be you know, a really complex, artistic kind of scent, right? They come across like pretty straightforward. Hey man, this is what you're getting. This is what I am. I'm not trying to smell super expensive. I'm just trying to smell pleasant. That, that's the Hugo Canteen fragrances. And sometimes it works out pretty well. And when you can get it for a good price, you know, 30 bucks, something like that, it works and you're like, all right, nice. This is solid. I can use this in these situations and it smells just simple and clean and easy going, like I said. But if you pick it up for, you know, 50, 60, 70, $80 or more, those canteen fragrances can just smell like complete garbage. Just really, really trash. This one I think has a really great opening to it. So that lemon zest, it's there, it's not, super sharp. Uh, it is a little bit bracing, you know, very fresh, uplifting, energizing to an extent, but it's that sweet mint, that like almost iced mint underneath it and the aquatic feel that this one has that really pushes it forward. It makes it stand out a little bit versus some of the other canteen fragrances. It'll have you smelling great when it's hot outside. Uh, that's really when I would go for this one. So again, in spring, uh, late spring into summer when it gets hot outside. This is a really great choice. You can wear it anywhere. I mean, there's nothing here that 
that stands out, that sticks out in a, in a bad way. You just kind of have to know what you're getting into. I would say out of everything here, this one comes across uh, again to beat a dead horse, the most simplistic, but that's not always a bad thing because it does have a really addictive quality to it when it's hot out. So there we go. There are some fragrances that will not break the bank, that are not super expensive, that you can use through spring and summertime. And most of these, uh, really all of them, other than maybe Perry Ellis, are from names that are recognizable pretty much right away. And honestly, Perry Ellis is pretty recognizable too. All right, guys, that will do it for me. Thank you for hanging with me here today. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.